Good morning, everyone. We apologize for the delay, but we are glad that you are all here with us. We need to warm up a little bit. It's very cold in this uh, assembly hall this morning. And so I want to invite each of you to stand up with me as we sing Come Now, Fount of Every Blessing. together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege that is ours this morning to call upon the God of the universe and to invite you at the beginning of this semester and at the beginning of this day. We want to praise your name for having been with us while we were absent one from another during the break. We want to thank you for your sustenance for the sleep you afford us, for security and for safety and travel that we could have coming together here this morning. And we adore you, Lord, because of the way you care for each one of us in our family units and individually as staff and lecturers and also as students. And so, Lord, we ask this morning that you will bless our opening assembly, the words that will be said and what will be done that it bring glory and honor to your name. We request you also, Lord, that you will bless us this semester, that you will be with each student in each module, that you will guide each lecturer with each class, and that you will be with our administrators as well as the rest of our college staff. We want to give this semester to you and asking you, Lord, that you will direct us so that we will not just receive the best of grades, 
but also the best of transformation. And as we interact with text and with books and with other course material, may we also experience the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so now we want to commit this meeting into your care and be with each one who will still do a part. We ask and leave this into the full control of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you, Lord, that we have come together here, that you've watched over us, that you love us, and that you care about us. And with that confidence, we come humbly before you and commit ourselves into your care for this day and for this semester. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's a chilly day, but we are here. Uh, thank you for coming to Opening Assembly. We know there are a number of students still on their way, not here. And we pray uh, for them that they will experience travel blessings. Welcome to the second semester of 2023. I hope you enjoyed your somewhat short winter break and that you've come back ready for the semester, invigorated, motivated, and ready to do your best. First of all, welcome to our new students. We have some new students that are joining the institution and a very special welcome to you. We hope that you will enjoy your academic journey as you start the semester. Secondly, our returning students, welcome back. And uh, again, we hope that you uh, are fully intentional on having a good semester. And lastly, a special group, our prospective graduates. This is your last semester. A uh, few might have finished at the end of the first semester already and just waiting for graduation the first weekend in December. And we pray a special blessing on you as you engage with your last modules, coursework, um, that you can uh, happily march down the aisle um, at the commencement ceremony. It is also my great pleasure to introduce to you a new lecturer that have joined the staff at the institution um, uh, in the wake of Mr. Mitchell Masatise leaving. And I'd like to introduce Mrs. Mikhaila Marsh. If you would stand, please, Mikhaila. Mrs. Marsh, we welcome you uh, to the faculty and staff of the institution. Thank you. Um, she joins us holding a BCom Accounting from UWC, a postgraduate diploma in Applied Accounting Sciences from UNISA, and a CASA, Chartered Accountant, South Africa. And we welcome you uh, for and hope that you'll enjoy the modules that you'll be teaching this semester. Um, she will be teaching the following four modules, Fundamentals of Auditing, Corporate Finance, Cost and Management Accounting 2, and International Financial Reporting Standards, or IFRS, I think, as it is known. And then I would also like to mention our new contract lecturers. There are some contract lecturers that are joining us for the first time this semester, and they are Mrs. Joy McKenzie, will be teaching Act 131, Introduction to Accounts 1B. Mr. Timothy Harris, who will be doing HOM 136, Basic Law. Mr. Regan Hamilton, Management 2, City Project Management. And Mr. Warren Schultz, Auditing Applications. Um, from the Faculty of Social Sciences and Education, we have teaching Photography 1, Mr. Tommaso Scaletti, and um, Cosa, Conversational Language, Mrs. Pilasande Mkwebo, and Industrial Psychology and Organizational Behavior, Mr. Rosario Oliver. These are the new contract lectures that will be joining us this semester. So with that, welcome to all, and we pray it's going to be a good semester. Thank you.
Let us rise and sing the national anthem together, either on screen or on your folded program. be seated as we will give the time for our opening address with Prof. Adrian Flats. Very good morning to everyone. I trust and hope that you're looking forward to a fantastic semester. So, why are you here? To learn? Yes. To get a qualification? Yes. And it is here that we hope that all of you, no matter the program that you are studying, will become critical thinkers which has nothing to do with criticizing people. You see, there's information that you will learn, skills that you will be taught. But information, data, theories, practices, change over time. And in 20 years' time, who knows how much you have learned here will become redundant. One of the key things that you should learn is to be a critical thinker. Critical thinking has been described as a widely accepted educational goal, unquote. And the definition of critical thinking is contested, but I give the following Google suggested definition for the time being. Critical thinking is important for making judgments about sources of information and forming your own arguments. It emphasizes a rational, objective, and self-aware approach that can help you to identify credible sources and strengthen your conclusions. Critical thinking is important in all disciplines. And I put dot, 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 because I ended in the middle of a sentence. The point that I would like to emphasize this morning is the fact that critical thinking is self-aware. Critical thinking helps us to understand our own biases, agendas, cultural commitments, and prejudices. It enables us to recognize that what we may have thought for years, the very way we have been inculcated throughout our lives, may have serious shortcomings and not carry the universal significance and truth of the world that we have always thought. We could actually be wrong. In fact, I would like to suggest 
that this aspect of critical thinking may allow us to discover our actual intelligence. Um, I'm not trying to upset anybody here, but intelligence or intelligence quotient are not necessarily descriptive of our potential intelligence. There are things that make us dumb. Things that make us stupid. We have been told things all our lives by our parents, by our teachers, by our friends, by the media. We are receptacle to so much information and we erroneously think that what we know indicates our intelligence. But really, all we are doing when we gather information in this way is being a conduit or container for the ideas of other people. The critical thinker has learned tools and skills that allows for a certain objectivity in the gathering of information. They are able to evaluate and judge ideas while they suspend their own prejudices and would, uh, that would otherwise cause them to reject or accept ideas without this evaluation. There is something called the Flat Earth Society. Have you heard of it? If any of you think that the world is flat, you need to evaluate your critical thinking skills. You should be able to evaluate ideas with not total objectivity, but with a certain objectivity. You should be able to listen to new ideas and understand them completely before you judge them. Our prejudices cause us to reject ideas because they don't agree with the garbage we already think. Am I saying that too harshly? We need to be able to view ideas and the people who espouse those ideas without prejudice. And I use the word prejudice negatively there, but I would also like to point out why it is a negative word. It consists of two concepts, pre, meaning before, and Judas, judge. It means that we judge beforehand, before we know, before we understand. There's something that I'm sure many of you are familiar with called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Any of you heard of that? One or two hands. The Dunning-Kruger effect is named after the people that did the research on this. And what it is, is a cognitive bias whereby people with low ability, expertise, or experience regarding a type of task or area of knowledge tend to overestimate their ability or knowledge. It basically means that people who know very little about something have an overinflated view of what they do know there is an axiom that bears repeating here. A little knowledge or learning is a dangerous thing. Um, that's a quote from Alexander Pope in an essay on criticism. And the whole quote goes like this, and it's quite hard to understand just on a listening, so I will explain it. It goes like this. It's a little poem. A little learning is a dangerous thing. Drink deep or taste not the Pyrian spring their shallow drafts intoxicate the brain, and drinking largely sobers us again. So if you drink shallowly from knowledge, then you just get drunk by that shallow knowledge. You need to drink more and drink deeply, and you will sober up and see the truth. The message is relatively simple. If one only has a surface knowledge, one may be quite satisf satisfied or even infatuated with what one knows, believing it to be the final word on all truth. But if one decides to drink deeper, one will realize how much 
there is left to know. This could be explained by the use of another axiom. The more one knows, the more one realizes how little one knows. And so, we earn a degree to show the world that we are not empty vessels that think we know a lot. No, no, we are not empty vessels. We have taken the trouble to get educated. We are not guilty of the false knowledge indicated by the Dunning-Kruger effect. Indeed, and that is a good thing. So why are we here? To learn, yes, become knowledgeable in your field. But there are plenty of people who have also done the same degree as you, will have, who also have the same apparent skill set on paper. What does on paper mean? Well, it means your degree, that piece of paper that tells people that you apparently know something. It means your CV or your resume, that piece of paper that tells any prospective employer how fantastic you are. But do you as a person match up to the description that is inscribed there? Are you really any good? It's no longer a question of potential. When you've got your degree, it's not a question of potential potential. Employers tend to be very pragmatic about things. Let us say that you find yourself a job after you graduate and it pays 40,000 rand a month. This means that in order for you to keep your job, you need to be worth more than 40,000 rand a month to your employer. Why would they pay you 40,000 rand if you're not worth that to them? And they need to get a bit more out of you to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, uh, it's even. That's no good. But do you meet that threshold? If not, you will soon be unemployed again. So what are you worth? Of course, while it is impossible to put a monetary value on a person... It is possible to put a monetary value on their worth to a company. What I have noticed, however, is the following. A degree will get you in the door. It may get you an interview. It may even help you win the job. But whether you keep that job, whether there is a career to be found for you, depends on who you are. What is your character? What type of person are you? If you want to be successful, then you need to be a person of character. It's not just about knowledge anymore. It is about who you are as a person. There are certain things we learn that cannot be examined. And This is a quote. Character is important for the fulfillment of the divine purpose in history, the vindication of the validity of the Christian faith, and the optimum realization of human potential and destiny. Here is a religious or faith component, but I don't want to emphasize that right now. I would like to extract the following phrase. Character is important for the optimum realization of human potential. What is your maximum potential? It is this that you need to strive to realize in the time you are here. Now is the time to learn. When you get into the workforce, you have to deliver. So if character is good, I will be able to realize my full, full, fulfill my potential, my full potential. But what is character? Character, and this is a quote, Character is that which gives motivation, coherence, consistency, and direction to our total relational and behavioral functions. So what does that mean for your time at Helderberg College of Higher Education? You should have fun while you're here. When I studied at Helderberg College back in the late 1990s, it was the greatest time of my life. And the reason it was the greatest time of my life was 
I didn't have pressure. I realize that you have pressure. Financial pressure. I worked four jobs while I was here. Academic pressure. How are you doing? Those are realities. You need to have a strong work ethic. You need balance, you need to play, that's fine. But you need to have a strong work ethic. Being on time with assignments. Being on time for all your appointments. Learn it here. Because when you leave here and you get into the workforce and you don't have that because you've never done it, you'll be out of a job. It means not procrastinating, keeping pace with your studies. Oh, don't think. Let me tell you, my modules, any of you studying with me this, <laughs> this semester, keep pace. There's no time when you're mid-semester, to catch up the stuff that you've already done. That's gone. It's new stuff that's coming. But it means more than this. It means sustaining good relationships with those around us, with your fellow students and with your lecturers. Work with people. Be there for others. Be kind. Be patient. Be dependable. For your fellow students, never mistreat them. I know that the dating game is a big thing. But let me tell you, I don't, look, it's not for me to say. But no sexual congress or drugs or alcohol or smoking or any of those things are going to help your future self. Do yourself a favor for the future. Be the person now so that in four years' time, you are brilliant. Don't destroy your life here. Grow and build. Make wise decisions. We all want to do good. And I'm going to close by quoting Anton Rupert, who's a billionaire, owns grape farms in the Salambosh area. And he had a niece. And this is a true story, by the way, because my wife used to work for, not for Rupert in particular, but his, his son was the CEO of the company. And this was the quote that he said to his niece, who wanted to do good. She wanted to be a philanthropist. And he said to her, before you can do good, you must do well. Do well. Good luck and have a fantastic semester. We are all going to sing showers of blessing.
muted. I do want to apologize. I realize that some of our contract, new contract lecturers might be in the audience, and I neglected to invite you to stand. So let's go back and correct that. Uh, Mrs. Joy McKenzie. She's not here, I think, busy with registration. Uh, Mr. Timothy Harris. Oh, he's at the back on the balcony. <laughs> OK, thank you. And Mr. Regan Hamilton. There we go. Thank you. Welcome. And then I know Mr. Warren Schultz is not here. Mr. Fiscaletti. Mrs. Pilar Sande Huebo, are you here? No. And then, yes, Mr. Oliver, not here. All right. So just again, just to correct that. Thank you. Um, please, I invite you to give your attention for a number of announcements. And... First of all, concerning registration, as you know, lead registration kicks in today, applicable from today, and will close next week, Wednesday, the 19th of February, of, of July, <laughs> of July, we don't go back in time, at one o'clock. And this is also the final date for dropping, adding, or changing any of your modules. So please uh, keep that in mind. And then I would like to encourage those students who are here, not registered yet, please go and visit the finance department uh, to talk about provisional registration. Please don't stay away. Don't keep quiet. Go and um, uh, visit the finance department. Next up, I'm going to invite Ms. Aliziwe Somsewu, who's going to make an announcement on behalf of the SRC. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, a very warm welcome to all present here, respected lecturers and students. Um, I have a few quick announcements to make from our side, the SRC. Um, we'll be having some social events um, this semester, um, just to name a few um, brain games, um, a movie night, and then we'll also be having at the end of the semester um, a banquet, so please look out for that. It will be communicated in due time via email. Um, and I also wanted to mention the hoodies that were mentioned last semester, um, that they are ready this semester and will communicate to you guys um, the costs and everything. Um, that's all. Anyway. And we ask you, request you to support your SRC this semester. Right, books, textbooks. Um, your lecturers will uh, inform you uh, whether you can buy your, lex uh, the, your textbooks. And to that effect, please note that Van Skyke, the booksellers, will be here on campus in the foyer of the administration building on Wednesday, Wednesday the 12th from nine o'clock to one o'clock. So please check with your lecturers if they ordered books and then you can go and buy the books in the foyer. Uh, this will be the only time that they will come. Otherwise you might have to make a plan to go to Stellenbosch. So um, just take note of that. Regarding the library, the Peter Vessels Library, please note that um, new carpets have been uh, put in on the second and third floors. However, the library will still be closed this week. You can imagine it was a mammoth task to move everything so that carpets could be laid. So the library will be closed. However, if you need the help um, of the librarians, please email them or phone them or send them a message and they are there to assist you should you need any information, should you want to get started on your assignment already and you want um, uh, 
research info or information about journals, um, but the library will physically uh, still be closed this week. Um, important announcement, students of the following modules, please note that your classes will only commence next Monday, the 17th, today in a week's time, and this would be Mrs. Marsh's modules. I already mentioned them, ACC 383, Fundamentals of Auditing, ACC 352, Cost and Management 2B, ACC 380, IFRS, and FNC, Finance 399, Corporate Finance. Your lectures will commence next Monday, but I'm sure she will be in touch with you before that. Similarly, uh, the students that are going to do industrial psychology or organizational behavior, Mr. Rosario Oliver, your classes will also only start next Monday. So that gives you the opportunity to get going with your other modules, get ahead, and um, uh, we hope that everything works out well. I'm now going to invite Professor Apollos uh, to make his presentation. Thank you. Here, I'm just asking the librarian to just join me. We were in Kenya just um, last month as, as all the lecturers in the different institutions who teach theology, all from all the areas in Africa. And then they donated some books to us, which we want to give to the library. I want to mention the first um, two because Missiology One students need to get to the reserve deck so that you can use this. The first one is dealing with the demonic and African context. Culture, Adventist theology, and mission in Africa. Those are the two you're going to need for Missiology 1. Then also the Trinity and the Bible. Okay, so your hands are going to grow. I'm going to ask Prof. Saucy to put it in the bag. And this is then the books from the Biblical Research Institute, the BRI, who donated these ones. Theology, Philosophy, Hermeneutics, Mission. A song for the sanctuary, quite a thick book, 998 pages. Then biblical hermeneutics and Adventist approach. And then the Pan-African Journal of Theology. I'm just smiling for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the word. And then two... Um, journals from the University of Africa, Pan-African Journal of Education and Social Sciences, and also from the Health and Environmental Studies. And these we got from the BRI and AUA. Thank you so much to you, Mrs. Thank Sharp, you. for well, so taking it care in the library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll put them in the bag. <laughs> we'll put them in the bag, and somebody will carry your bag to the library. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, now we come to the nice and exciting part that I'm sure some of you have been waiting for. Um, it is now my pleasure to announce the names of the students on the Dean's List of Excellence for the first semester 2023. And of course, these are the students that have excelled academically in their studies and have maintained A averages starting up from 75%. Uh, we're going to call you up by faculty and the deans will hand it over. Can I please suggest that you come up these stairs and please watch out for the cords. Um, uh, make sure that you don't fall or trip. Um, and when your certificate is handed, just stay for a couple of seconds so that we can capture the moment with a photo. Right, we start with the faculty of business. Simukele Magagula, 76%. Uh, 
And this is for the Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting. Next, the Bachelor of Arts in Communication from the Faculty of Social Sciences and Education. First up at 78%, Felicity Carlson. Seventy nine per cent, Jean Apollos. And then I don't know if they're related, 85% Zoe Apollos. Sorry. 86% Atiyah Fani. Mm -hmm. 87% Maria Pinar. The Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, 77% Tanaka Dupois. Okay. 81% Ludri Matia. 83% Chloe Schwemberger. Oh. <laughs> Bachelor of Education in Foundation Phase Teaching, 75% Carmen Brits. Seventy six per cent, Ilse Bartman. Seventy six per cent, Zia van Rienen. Seventy nine per cent, Sanri Klute. Eighty one per cent, Megan Ebrahim. 83% Stacy de Mornay. 83% Janie Macherman. 83% Hayley Peterson. 
At G3%, Tanya Pretorius. At G4%, Jody Daniels. Eighty seven per cent Lunati Sobequa. And at ninety three per cent Shelby Buta. <laughs> Lastly, the Faculty of Theology, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Eighty five per cent Uyapo Kupe. Eighty seven per cent Leonard Anya. I think in faraway Thailand, 88% Edith de la Land. Yeah. 89% Kirshlin Chetty. Yeah. Last but certainly not least, at 95%, Maurits Wenzel. Thank you, and again, a big congratulations to all, and we invite all of you to work hard so that we can also give you something at the beginning of next semester. Um, after the song and benediction, please note that classes will officially commence with period six at 12 o'clock. Thank you. I would like to invite all of you to stand as we sing the college song.
Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for the privilege of being a part of Elderberry College of Higher Education. We want to thank you that we know that you are present with us and that you will guide us. As we begin this semester, we want to present it into your hands and we pray that you may lead and that you may guide. Continue to bless this institution. Continue to bless the lecturers, the staff, the leaders of this institution. We want to pray also for the students, those who are here present and those who are going to be studying remotely. There are also those who are still struggling to register. We want to pray that you may continue to guide and to lead. We pray that you may continue to guide us the rest of this day and indeed the rest of this semester and the year. We pray for these favors in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.